part three of my video series highlighting the Mercedes M272 and 273 engines. If you haven't seen the first three parts, I'll put a link below showing where the playlist is. I highly recommend you do this because this is going to be a lengthy series and I'm not going to be repeating myself. The focus today is on what is the difference between the 272 V6 and the 273 V8. Now, you've already got to see this V8 engine in this S550. And I know some of you are thinking, well, Kent, where's the V6 anyway? I mean, you keep saying they're almost the same. Well, guess what? <laughs> Your wish is my command. Well, here it is. So earlier today, I rolled in this C350 sedan, pulled it up close to the front of the S-Class there, and we're going to get to see a really good comparison between the two engines. I'll kind of go back and forth to show you some of the similarities and then to explain some of the differences. But as you can see by these engine covers here, this being the V6 and this one here being the V8, Unless you are familiar with these cars, you wouldn't be able to really tell the difference. You know, I know what some of you are thinking, say, oh, I can tell the difference. You know, one's bigger than the other. Well, if you did not have any reference together, that's what I'm getting at. They look very similar in overall appearance to the non-initiated, okay? So this here is the V6. This here is the V8. Now, if I take a tape measure, Let's measure the engine cover on this V6. That's 26 inches. And I'll come over here, and on the V8, it's 28 inches. Now, let's pull the front covers off. All right, now look. See, this one's sitting a little bit further forward. And by the way, <laughs> when I looked at this, I said, look at this clip back here. It's not fastened. This car has just come out of a recent service from a very reputable independent service shop in the Seattle area. I'm just going to mention that now because later on I'm going to talk about you know, the importance of you learning about these cars and doing some of the work yourself, because that's one way you can be sure it gets done. This is a little off topic, but I failed to mention this in a previous video when I was discussing the importance of changing your air filters and the air filter housing seal in the rear here. This is a critical seal. And here's a little clue. If you snap this hook off by hand easily like that, it probably means the seal's worn out. You really need to have a tight enough seal that you're prying this off with a flat blade screwdriver. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of this air filter housing off. Okay, take a look at that. Now I hope in this video I can prove my point about the emotional aspects of working on your own engine. I want you to focus on this engine here. If you recall in the previous video, <laughs> I went to town and cleaned this engine. Now let's take a look at the V6. All right, let's take a look at the bottom of the air filter housing. Now look at the engine. Look at all this road grime on the engine. Now, if we're going to do some major inspection work and possibly some repair, we're calling it preventative repair work, on this engine, well, I don't know. I can't stand all this dirt everywhere. Now, remember, this engine has been highly maintained, both by the dealer and then an independent shop. I have every service record, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. But I don't think any shop's going to clean the engine like I showed you because it's going to cost you too much money. So this is what you will see most of the time when you get your engines back from a repair shop. So now you can really see the difference. Of course, you have 
four coil packs, four spark plugs aside. And that's pretty nice. You only have four on these engines. Also look at the intake manifold. It is longer. Most of this section up front is the same, and that's where a lot of preventative maintenance is done on these engines. So if we go over to the V6, you know, there you go. Three coil packs per side, only three spark plugs per side, not six like in the M112 V6. And look at the manifold. The manifold is considerably shorter. It's mostly covered by this ECU unit here that's sitting on top of the manifold. But once again, if you come forward here and look at the front of the engine, you're going to find that almost all of these maintenance items are going to be the same as on the V8. Similar to its predecessor, the M112 V6, this M272 has a lot of room to work in the front of the engine, to work on replacement of the tension of the belt, the pulleys, the alternator, water pump, and so on. I decided to pull this air filter housing over here and pull out these air fillers. I know some of you would be curious, hey Kent, how did those fillers fare? All right, not too bad. They're definitely cleaner than what was on the S550, but you can see there's, there's quite a bit of dirt down here. This is typical of that sand dirt that comes off the freeway for a lot of freeway driving. And of course, in, in the box here, you can see I'm not going to mess with this until I take this outside and clean it. So sometimes when you have a filler like this, you can clean this up and maybe just blow this out if you want to reuse it. That's your call. But these filters are really inexpensive. And if I see any question at all, I'll replace them. And you're going to find this interesting. This is the filter for the V8. This is the air filter housing out of a V6. Look at that. The filters are the same. Now that's just a clue. And we're going to find out a lot of parts are exactly the same as we move through this video series. Now I think we can focus on the heart of this series, and that's going to be what I will call the 100,000 mile inspection on the M272 V6 and on the M273 V8. Why 100,000 miles? Any of you who've been around cars and worked on cars and owned a lot of cars, you know that for some mysterious reason, 100,000 miles is pretty key. And you see a lot of people selling cars at 85, 90,000 miles because they also know, you know, there's a warranty issue, but a lot of cars aren't warrantied that long. It's just yeah, right around 100 to 120,000 miles, a lot of things start going wrong. Now, some of you know my background is aviation, the commercial and instrument rated pilot and an A&P mechanic. And I flew in the jungles of New Guinea back in the 1970s. Boy, that sounds like a long time ago. But we did 1,000-hour inspections on the airplane, literally took them apart, you know. It's all about prevention. Now, when you're flying an airplane in a very hostile environment like New Guinea, you want to make sure you don't have a problem. Because <laughs> I did have a couple problems. And it really tightened up my attitude towards prevention. Preventative maintenance, that's the key. So you got a couple options here. If you own these cars, you can just drive them until they break and then take them into the shop. The problem is that gets very inconvenient sometimes. <laughs> you have to call up AAA. But the other thing is certain issues on these engines right here, if you neglect them, they'll lead to problems down the road that will be a lot more expensive. So I think if you get one of these cars, and I highly recommend you don't buy them, you know, at 120, 130, 40, 50,000 miles, unless you have a proof of a lot of maintenance. If you're lucky enough to get one at 50,000 miles, you may not have to do a lot of maintenance at all. I particularly chose these two cars because the S550 has 98,000 miles. This C350 has 92,000 miles. And we're going to get to look into these engines. We're not going to tear them apart, but we're going to go all around them in the next videos and go through this inspection and parts replacement together. And you know, the fact there's this commonality in parts, I can do these two together. So we'll be going back and forth between the two engines as we see various issues. Now I'm gonna start out, not in the next video, but in the video after talking about the key issues at 100,000 miles. Some of them occur maybe at 40 or 80, but 
you know, pretty much you can say, okay, these are things you have to be watching out for at 100,000 miles. You look at these engines, and if you've only worked on the older ones, you know, you can see the fasteners are different and access is different. So in the next part in this series, I'm going to go over the tools I recommend. I'm going to show you all my tool set for working on these engines. And maybe that will help you in preparation if you decide to tackle some of these jobs. And then in the following video, I'll sit down with you and we'll go over each item that you're going to have to be concerned about if you want to reliably own one of these M272 or M273 engines.